Hey guys, it's Ben, and today I'm going to be walking through the Open Admin Hack the Box challenge. This is an easy rated challenge, which I actually thought it was a little bit challenging to be honest. Um, it was quite fun, and it's quite a long one as well. It involves quite a few steps. So um, yeah, let's let's get into it. I've got the box up and running. We've got an IP address there. I will copy that. Um, we can just check it's pinging, and we can see it's returning to pings, like so. Perfect. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to do an in-map scan, I'm going to scan all ports, tack SV for uh, version service enumeration, tack SC for the default NSE scripts, that is the in-map scripting engine, um, that will give us a little bit more information, tack N to not uh, do a reverse DNS resolution, it takes up a bit of time and it's not necessary, um, and the same with tack PN to not send a ping check, because we know it is pinging, it is up and running. Um, I'll put the IP in there and I'll output this to full thorough.log. Um, I have already ran this command and I will open it here. So we can see the command there like I like I ran originally just then. Um, it's got two ports open, it's got 22 uh, which is an SSH uh, service. We can actually see the, um, the software which is running this SSH service and it's open SSH 7.6. We can see it's also running on Ubuntu. Um, <coughs> we also have a web server here on port 80. Um, it's an Apache web server and it looks by, by the title to be like the default page, the, the splash page when you first install uh, Apache. The, um, it works and I'll show you that in a second. What I wanna do as well is add to my host file um, open admin to hack the box and I have already done this we can see down there um, I've mapped the uh, the IP for address we're given for the box to the host name so I don't need to use the IP address I can just use the host name and it will work fine so let's have a look let's go to open admin dot hack the box and we can see look this is that splash page I was on about the Apache de de default page um, there's not much of interest here so what I would then go and do is do some fuzzing. I would try find some directories um, and files, um, perhaps any V hosts, and see if we can find anything more juicy to dig into, um, because this doesn't really give us many options. There is, of course, the SSH port. You could perhaps try brute force that or see if there's any vulnerabilities for that version, but it's never really a good idea to do, um, unless it's your last resort in these um, hat the box challenges. Hat, uh, the web server will have lots more juicy stuff to dig into. So um, I'm going to go into the recon directory. I'm going to make a directory called web, cd into web, and I'm going to make another directory called fuzz, fuzzing. I'll cd into this, and this is just where I'll do the fuzzing. Um, so yeah, I'm going to use um, ff, um, which I think it stands for fuzz fast, faster you fool. Um, and I want to do open admin the box. I want to fuzz this first top layer endpoint here, um, and that's basically like a placeholder for the words in the word list. The word list I'm going to use is user share word lists, uh, not rock queue, set list, discovery, web content, raft, medium, files, dot text. Um, I'm going to tee this to files dot log. So this is the word list. It's going to go. Um, there's one thing, one more thing I need to do is um, set a filter. At the moment, this will just um, return the. I'll show you. I, I mean, I'll show you. What I'm, I'll show you what it does at first. If I just do this, um, actually, that that's that's fine. Um, so sometimes you want to put a filter in for like the size or you filter code 404. It looks like by default it filters out 404. Um, but we can see there's this index.html, all the other gives for, uh, 403s, and that's like permission denied, so we can't access that. And index.html is likely just to be this. So if we go index.html, this will just be the de def default page. So there's no interesting files we can access um, straight away. Let's have a look for directories. So I'm going to tee this one to duras.log for directories. Um, and I'm going to change the word list to medium directories.txt. And I will run that. 
and we can see there's a music directory, artwork, server status 403, so permission denied. There's a Sierra directory. So we do have quite a lot of juicy stuff or a lot of good results we can log into. This 301 just redirects us. So if we go onto this, it'll probably redirect us to like um, music. So if we, we fuzz this, I reckon it'll just redirect us to that. But if we go, yeah, that's what it does. So we've got one here. I'm going to briefly look at all, all of these and then dig into it individually. Um, if we hover over um, hover over these like buttons, we can see in the bottom left hand corner the URL which it goes to, which is this music.index.html. This is likely what we're looking at. So if we click on this, it just takes us back to where we already were in the about. This also takes us to index.html in the pages. We've got these category.html. And this looks like, <coughs> pardon me, um, this just looks like uh, like a template music page. It doesn't look like there's anything really interesting on any of these. We will check each one just for coverage. Um, it doesn't look like we see there's some Laura Mipsum down there. Um, it doesn't look like there's anything too juicy. Artist blog contact. Perhaps the contact may have something interesting. Some perhaps a username here. Not really. Um, in news, this goes to blog. And there's a blog there full of Laura Ipsum, different pages, which actually, if you hover over these, they just don't go anywhere. Um, this looks more interesting. There's a help. That doesn't go anywhere. That actually goes to nowhere. The login. Um, doesn't do anything either and let's just go back to home Ah, so the help and then the login does go to something so it goes to this forward slash um, ONA so this is a bit different it actually takes us to a directory let's just open that in a new tab and we'll have a look at this in a second um, in the meantime I'm gonna go look at these other uh, web page uh, directory so we had an artwork Arc work, um, view our services, hovering over this link, it doesn't go anywhere. Contact does do something. It looks like we've got some contact form. This just looks like a template page. It doesn't look like there's any functionality um, apart from that contact form where we could perhaps um, like put our name here and see if this like, actually makes a post request. Um, let's just see this real quick. So if we see this. It does actually make a post request. Um, there we go. It doesn't actually look like any payload is sent, so it sends the request, but it doesn't look like it sends anything. It doesn't, we don't really need to look at it too much. This forward slash ONA has came back, and this looks interesting to me. We've, we've got this open net admin, so I'm not too familiar, I wasn't too familiar with what this is. Um, and it looks like we're a, sort of a guest user here. And we, 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 we're given a version, so that's interesting. And there's a DNS domain, so we can click on this, and it says something about DNS domain administration. And there's a domain there, domain name there of openadmin.hackthebox. So this definitely looks like something we shouldn't have access to. Um, definitely, um, we can do some googling. Like, what is open uh, open net admin? Let's just have a look. So. Open Admin provides a database managed in inventory of your IP network. Each subnet host and IP can be tracked via a centralized AJAX, AJAX enabled web interface that can help you reduce tracking errors. Um, so yeah, I, I wasn't too familiar with this. There is, uh, we can change here. Uh, let me try this. We can change and we're given a username and password. Perhaps there's some admin account. So let's just go open net admin default credentials and we can see you can log in as admin admin user with a password admin if desired let's just test this out and then I will show you something else because this confused me uh, so there's this admin account and we can log in and success we are running as the admin user they're using the default credentials if you go back to here it does say by default, when you connect, you'll be a guest user. We have modified the guest user to have full admin privileges. So I don't know why, um, maybe you have to configure it yourself, the privileges by default, the guest user is the same as admin user. I don't know. Anyway, so we are given a version of this software. 
Um, let let's let's just do some googling, right? Let's see. We can actually use search exploit. Let's just go uh, search exploit. Um, open net admin, and we can see look there is a remote code execution for this precise version. And there's also a Metasploit module for it. I'm not going to use the Metasploit. Um, we could try this. Um, and I did try this uh, one. For some reason, I couldn't get it working, this POC. Um, instead, let's just find one on GitHub. So open net admin 18.1.1 POC. I always prefer GitHub um, uh, proof of concepts for exploits. Um, personally. Um, with the the search exploit ones, you, I don't know if it's possible to see like how uh, how reliable they are. Where as if you're on GitHub, if something has a lot of stars and lots of people are watching it, it's more likely to be um, more reliable. So we, we've got this this proof of concept here, um, and we can we can try this out. Right, we can go into our uh, exploits directory and we can git clone I just want to zoom in a bit we can git git clone this proof of concept um, cdr to owner rsc what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open this here just so we can have a quick look um, so it looks like there's this function for exploit with a target and a command um, it looks like with there's some just command injection right um, we don't really need to know the ins and out of this vulnerability. You could research this yourself, um, but it's not necessary to solve this, the challenge. It's definitely a good thing to do. Um, but yeah, let's just give it a go and see, see, see if we can try it. Let's just go ONR RCE, and we're given the format we have to um, to use. So I'm just gonna ex just go for the exploit straight away, and we have to supply a URL. Um, in this case, it's going to be open admin dot hat the box forward slash o n a, which is the open um, open net admin endpoint on the website. So let's just give this a go and see what this does. Right, it says connecting. It takes a little while, but eventually, it says connected successfully. Can we run commands? ID. We can. We have got a shell. Um, the problem with this shell, and I'll show you what I mean, if we go pwd to show the current directory and then I want to let's go out one and do it again, we can't, it it doesn't store the, the, the state of the, the shell, so I want to upgrade this to like a more fully functional reverse shell. Um, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get a listener up, nblp444, and I want to go to rev shells. Um, we can try this one just to start and see if this works because um, what I like to show in these challenges is it's a lot of trial and error. So if we just tr try this, we can see it doesn't look successful. We didn't get a call back and this isn't what we're looking for really. We can still run commands, right? Uh, ID, yes, we can. So let's try a different one. Uh, it may not all always work on the first time. This MK FIFO. Um, they seem to it seems to be quite reliable to be honest. So let's give this one a go. And look, we have got a, a callback. We've got a, a a functional reverse shell now, which is quite neat. Um, I'm just gonna upgrade this to a TTY shell. So Python. Well, what version of Python is involved? So we say the which command. Say which Python. Um, there is no. There's not the normal Python or just. Python, if we do which Python 3, we can see that Python 3 does exist, um, and then we can go Python 3 taxi import pty, pty.spawn, uh, bin bash, there we go, we've got a tty shell, that is nice, if we just try clear, um, it says the term environment variable isn't set, so we can set term equals x term, and now we should be able to clear nice we've got a fully functional reverse shell so um, let's just have a look around right we're running as this dub dub data user 
let's just cd up to the top of the root directory um, and let's see what users are on this box there is a jimmy user and a joanna user i'm guessing the user flag is in one of these two users let's just see if we can check out their home directories we get permission denied and we also get permission denied um, so what you may want to do is have a look around um, see what services are running uh, see what processes are running maybe look in some config files try to gather some credentials um, we want to find ways to privilege escalate a quick check you want to do and i always do this is sudo tac l to see if you have any sudo capabilities as the current user basically can the dub dub data user run a specific binary as sudo um, in this case no we we can't we get this weird error which i haven't actually seen before um, so that didn't work and what about if there's any sewed binaries so are there any uh, binaries which are configured um, that are owned by root and um, are configured to run with the permissions of root so uh, perm equals u equals s we're, we're checking if the um, it's got the sewed bits set and i'm also going to redirect all files we don't have permission to look at to dev null just so we don't get filled with loads of permission denied errors so if we run this we will get a list of binaries um, what you may want to do is go to gtfo bins uh, gtfo bins and let's say let's just pick a binary for example which we see here um, let, at right we would search at and we would see does it have the sewage bit or like the sewage um sorry not sewage bit if it has the sewage function you can just escalate with sewage um, I think you can also do it like this is it plus sewage and then search here so this restricts it such that it will only show binaries with sewage but you can look through this list and you can check this there are no binaries here which um, are sewage binaries binaries we can't get like an easy um, a trivial privesc so we're gonna have to dig a bit deeper have a look around um, linpeas um, is a very good uh, linux privilege escalation enumeration tool so i've got it here somewhere i'm going to set up a http server we can see um, linpeas is here and i'm going to download this to the temp directory just because I'll have write permissions in this directory by, um, by default, so I can put all my files here that I want to execute. So let's just do wget HTTP, and I'm going to put my own uh, VPN IP up here, which you can't see because my face is there, but we can see that is 10.10.16.4. So I'll move that back. 10.10.16.4, limpies.sh. And now we can see we've got a GET request from our HTTP server, which we're hosting on the Kali machine and now we can see we've got limpies there um, it's not got the execute bit set so if we did this for example um, it would give a permission denied we need to set the um, to make it executable and now if we go again we can see it's got the the it's got the executable bit set we can it we can run this we can execute this so I will execute this and we can see we've got the nice limpy screen here and this will basically go through this box it will run a load of commands it will look for vulnerabilities or uh, like kernel vulnerabilities which I tend to avoid um, and it will look for like common misconfigurations it will check if there are any docker containers it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a crazy useful tool um, and it will tell us a lot of stuff so it gives us a list of all the processes which are currently being ran um, and then like the process tree um, it will go for a lot of stuff and find a lot of interesting stuff um, but it won't find anything and in this case uh, one of the key things we needed um, it misses but that is fine it does find something else which is useful um, I am going to get like a sub all get a notes file going just so I can copy and paste some stuff which will be useful to us so we can see there are these users here which we identified from the home folders earlier the jimmy and joanna user um, we can see there is a mysql server running and um, it looks like if we we see here um, 
this is where they set up the vhosts for the web server. So virtual hosts basically um, allow you to host multiple websites on a single web server or on a single like server. So in this case, there's an internal .open admin, um, a, like a, a subdomain of open admin, and it, this is just where it's configured. Um, in the sites enabled internal conf file. Um, in this case, we look at this one. Um, it's listening on 127.0.0.1 on this IP here. So this web server is um, an internal web server. And I mean, it is called internal.openadmin. Um, so that means we won't be able to access it from outside. And we know that because when we scanned this originally, when we did our emit scan, we didn't see an open port for 52846. We do see something here, which is npm itk module. And I'll Google this just to show you. Um, it's quite interesting, this. Um, this basically allows you um, to run your vhosts under a different user ID. So say we the web server we initially um, com uh, compromised, this one here, it was running under the dubdub data uh, user, right? Because that's what we got the shell as. We are running as dubdub data. We can see with this module, this web server, this internal one is running over the Joanna user. So that's something interesting. Um, so I am just gonna copy this just because uh, it's quite useful to us. I'll copy this here. Um, but yeah, as I want to note, this is, like I said, this web web service, this port is only accessible internally from the victim, the target machine. So we're going to have to do some port forwarding such that we can access it remotely. I'll get onto that in a second. Um, and we can just carry on having a look around. I just want to see, we should get some, yeah. So we can see here the active ports, the ports which are listening. We can see, look, there's that 52846. Um, which is only listening internally. Um, that is the internal web server. And then we can see the two ports which we found in our in-map scan, the port 80 HTTP and SSH, which um, are open to the to the world, basically, compared to these two ports, which are um, only internal. 3306 is the MySQL port. So that's something we can investigate later. Perhaps we can find, creden find credentials. I don't know. Um, so we can look through and see if there's anything else interesting, which there may be. Um, I'm not going to bore you looking through all this when I know there is not. So I did look through all this originally, but I am going to go look in some other places. So I like to always check out the opt directory, um, and we can see there is a priv and an owner. Um, for the open net admin, we can see the priv is empty. It's got zero bytes. So if we just go file priv, it's empty. So I don't know why that's there or what that's for. You'll find out later. And this owner is a directory. We can cd into this and we can see this is where it looks like files um, are, are being stored for this open net admin. We know this open net admin. Um, there, there is a the, there's a MySQL ser service. We, we we identified that in the Limpies um, when we executed Limpies, we 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 identified the port 3306, and we also saw something about the MySQL server. We've got these um, on 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 the website. There's going to be a backend database. O ONA is going to have uh, Open Admin is going to have a back backend database where it manages authentication. So perhaps we can hunt for these credentials or hunt for details on, on this here. So let's just, I'm going to do a grep tech R for password, see if we find anything interesting. And we can go through this and we can look to see if there's any passwords. A lot of them is just like placeholders. Um, so let, let's just have a look and see if there's any passwords here. Um, it looks like there's something here, secret perhaps. So I will take this. Um, and just put this in our possible passwords. We've got a secret there. We don't know for sure. Um, 
And what about if instead we did grep tech r for password? It's sometimes written like that. Let's see what this finds. And we do find something interesting here, right? We find in www.localconfig database settings.inc.php a db password. So let's just cat this out. And it does look like we've got credentials here. We've got this ninja warrior. Um, so let's just copy all of this and we'll put this in here. This looks a lot more reliable. We've got the database login, which is owner sys. And we've got the password here. So um, when I saw this to begin with, I thought, uh, let, 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 let's log into this MySQL server um, or at least run some commands, see if we can dump any juicy information out of it. Um, so yeah, let's do that. MySQL, um, I can never rem remember these, um, uh, the command line arguments for this. Um, but yeah, let's just see. We've got this here. So there we go, the password there. Basically, I want to connect to this database through the command line. I want to see um, what, what information it may have. We know it's about this owner sys. Perhaps there's, so yeah, we'll, ju we'll, we'll just have a look. And then I believe it is tac E to actually run the SQL command through the command line. You can connect manually and have a shell, but in a reverse shell, it gets, it gets a bit messed up. So instead, I'm just going to do this show databases uh, and we can run it there and it looks like we were successfully be able, we were able to to run um, SQL commands. I'm just going to copy this over here um, just so we can edit it and then paste it back in. We can see there are two databases, the information schema which isn't really interesting to us and there's the owner default. So I'm going to uh, use owner default and then I want to show tables. This will list the tables which are used in this database and I will paste that there. We've got a lot of tables. I want to get rid of that one. We've got a lot of tables there. We can see there's a users one which comes which is interesting because perhaps there'll be some credentials in there, something interesting. So let's just do this. Select all from users. And then I'll get this again, copy this across, and we'll execute this and see uh, see what we find, right? We can see there are only two users for this owner admin. Um, that's the guest and the admin user. We were able to log into both, so it's, it's not really any use to us now, um, which is a bit annoying. Couldn't find anything with that, but we do have password right we've got this ninja warrior password um, what is the chances that this password is being reused across the network on different accounts we'll try that if we um, if we go back to our home directory cd home cd home we see there are two users so let's see if joanna perhaps uses this um, this um, password so it's Ninja Warrior. I'm just going to try find where I actually had it. There you go. Let me just copy this. Oh, it's from here, isn't it? There we go. Joanna. Is it Joanna's password? Let's give this a go. It's not Joanna's password, it looks like. What about Jimmy? CD into Jimmy. And it is Jimmy's password. We were able to change user to Jimmy, you can see what groups he's in. We see he is in this internal group, which is interesting. This is not a default group, and I suspect it's related to that web server we, we saw earlier, which we can't access yet. Um, but we do have access to Jimmy, so we'll be able to go into his home folder now, right? And we can see what files there are. There is no user flag here, so we're guessing that um, the user flag is in Joanna's home folder, but yeah, we can't access it from here. Um, there was that internal um, internal one, which is interesting because, um, and I do want to show you something, var dub dub dub. If we go ls tac la, we can see 
um, and I didn't test this out, I didn't show you, but as the dubdub data user account, I tell you what, I'm just going to do it anyway. I want to get two reverse shells going. I'll put this one on 443, and I'm going to get another one going here. Basically, I want to get a reverse shell as each user, uh, and I'm going to change this down here to 443. There we go. I'm going to get a reverse shell going as each user, just so I can show you. Um, if I run this one here, nice Python taxi import pty, pty.spawn bin bash export term equals x term. Nice. If we go to var dub 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 and we go internal, which would be um, where this. Uh, uh, the web server files, the like the 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 files for this um, v, v host is located. We can't get it as the 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 dub um, dub dub data user. This user Jimmy does have access to this, um, but we can't even access this web server at the moment, right? If we go to um, if we tried to go to uh, HTTP internal. First of all, it's not even our host file, so we won't be able to. Um, but it, it, it's hosted internally, right? We need to f uh, forward this internal port to an external port. So I'm going to use Chisel to do this. And this will basically mean um, we know there's this port uh, 52846, which is hosted internally. When we do our NMAP scan, we don't see this coming up. So it's only accessible from the internal um, network. I'm going to take this port and then I'm going to map it to um, an external port. And we're going to do that by using chisel. Um, I'm just going to I'm going to locate find type f chisel. I don't know where this file is actually located, but I've got it somewhere in my box. Um, So I'm going to make directory PE now, cd into PE, um, and I'm going to copy this file here, and we've got the chisel file here. So if you want to, and I would recommend doing this, I would check out the GitHub for this. It will give you some explanation on how it works, the different modes. Um, you can use it in with a SOC server as well, I'm pretty, so pretty sure. I'm just going to be using it. Um, In, in the basic mode basically so you've got a client and a server the server is on your attacking machine and is where you're listening it's where you want to forward the traffic from the victim machine to so I'm basically going to forward all traffic which is uh, like uh, if I send a traffic to port 5 what was it 52846 it's going to send it to the uh, the victim machine and then it's going to forward it back so I, I apologize for my poor explanation there um, but yeah let me just set this up so the syntax for this is um, I have to use the channel chisel binary server to specify I'm running it in server mode a port I'm going to listen on is 9999 and I want reverse um, there so it's listening on that port there I also just cd to desktop at the box one admin I need to copy it across uh, I need to copy this uh, chisel binary because we need to use the client mode on here so I'm gonna co uh, I'm gonna w get HTTP 10 10 16 4 chisel believe that's right yep there we go um, it's going to download it. We can see there's a get request for the binary. And then I'm going to run this one in client mode. Um, the server I want to connect to um, is my own IP, 10.10.16.4. And I've hosted that on port 999. The local port, the port which is which we're trying to access at the moment is um, 52846 so 52846 four, six. so that's the port 
which we're trying to access. The host we're trying to access it is localhost. And then I want to map that on my machine to, let's say, port um, 1337. And we run this, and we get permission denied error because I forgot to make this executable. And now we can see it has got the executable bit set, so I can copy this and do it again. And let's try it again. It can't listen on 5226. Have I got it the wrong way? Let me paste that again. I may have got this the wrong way. Uh, 1337, or it could be because it's too small. I think that's why. If I do 52846 to 127.001, if I do 1337 like this, okay, let me try this again, 1337, 127, 001, 52846, and that was it, right, that 846, that was, and we send this here. I'm hoping I will see on this side like a connection uh, to say it's been successful. Let's check this. Um, what I would now do is go to 177 like this and then go to 1337. But I don't think this is going to work and it's not. Um, if I do control C it's going to kill that and I have to do it again but that's fine. Let me just quickly get back to where I was. Uh, I can try another configuration. I don't know why this 1337 isn't working. Let me just, there we go. Let's cd into temp, export term equals x term. We've got chisel and I'm just gonna paste this again from here. I don't have it stored, but that is fine. Um, chisel, the server is 10, 10, 16, four. Uh, ah, client, sorry. Client 10, 10, 16, 4, 999. I'm actually going to try this time map from this port to this port on my local machine and just see if this makes the difference. Uh, 127001, and then I'll put that there again. So I'm mapping 152846 on the victim machine to 52846 on my local machine. I'll try this again. And it doesn't seem to be working. I know exactly why. This is a stupid mistake by myself. Um, chisel client 10, 10, 16, 4. I forgot to put an R here. And I'll just do it 5, 2, 8, 4, 6. I'll do it this mode just to show you this works on 1337. This specifies reverse, I believe, which is the flag I gave there. So let's try this again and it connects on 1337. This is what I was originally intending to do. Um, I apologize for the how long that took. And then we go back to here. Um, I may have got it the wrong way around again. I'm 127000. Yeah, I think I got it wrong way around again. Stupid me. Um, basically, I've mapped this port here to that port instead of mapping uh, this one to that one. I will get there eventually. Um, like I said, this is quite a long challenge, but that is fine. I'm going to copy these and manage it on a different screen. There we go. Let's just change this to 1337 to 52846. There we go. Let's copy that, copy that, give it another go. I'm going to stop and start this just so it clears it out. Try again. Uh, CD into temp, obviously. We've got a connection there, so now if we go to this and do it again, 
we can see we've mapped it from the remote server to our internal server. We can see on our box we've now got 1337 open. Just to show you, if I went nmap uh, like 127001 on port 1337, we've now got this port there open. So nice. We can try some credentials here. However, back to where I was originally. As this Jimmy user, we've got access to the internal directory, which is the source code for this basically. The index.php, logout.php, and main.php. Can I. I can cat main.php. Um, okay, let's just cat to index.php, right? Um, and it looks like they're dealing with the authentication, not with a database, directly in the PHP source code, which isn't, I mean, it's not the best practice, um, but we do have um, a hash here. We've got a SHA-512 uh, hash for this Jimmy user, which is what he used to authenticate here. So, um, what have I got here? Is this, yeah, I can get rid of that. I can also... Uh, I'll move that up. So I want to crack this hash, right? So let's just make uh, Jimmy hash. We've got this hash here. It's SHA-512. I'm going to chuck this straight in with John. Uh, John with the word list, uh, user share word list rock you. We can see it doesn't know what type it is, but it is a raw SHA-512. So we can give that there short. There we go, and it doesn't run. It doesn't. It doesn't find the hash. If I go back to show, we can see zero hash is cracked. It wasn't able to crack it. Basically, the password wasn't in the word list. As a backup, I'm just going to go to uh, crack station, and I'll put it in here, and we'll see if it's in this word list. So I have to try pass this capture. Cars. I don't think there's any more cars. There we go, crack. And we can see it is on crack station and it is revealed. Just to show, if we cat user uh, user user share word lists uh, rock you and we grep grep for revealed, we can see it isn't actually in there. So that's why it wasn't able to find it. But we do have the password now, right? We've got the password to it's one of these, it's this one here. The username is Jimmy, we saw this from the source code. Username is Jimmy, and the the password, when we share it, gives this, this is this password here revealed. We can log in, and we are given um, a private key, an RSA private key. This is likely to be an SSH key. Um, and it says, don't forget your ninja password. We can see it is encrypted, so it's encrypted with a passphrase. So let's copy this key here. And we'll go back over to here. I'll move this up a bit. There we go. We have another hash, or I'm going to call this IDRSA because it's an SSH key. Uh, and I'm going to write this. Um, what I'm going to do, because this is passphrase protected, we don't know pass pass rate I'm, I'm going to try crack this as well so I'm going to use sh to John and I'm going to put in IDRSA and I'm going to turn this to IDRSA hash and then I'm going to do what I did before IDRSA hash um, and the word list in this case is the rock queue like I usually do um, and I have done this before so it already knows what it is so I can show it and the pass phrase for this is blood ninjas so if I SSH with, um, we don't know what the user is, so we can take a guess. It's the Joanna user, we can guess that. So Joanna at openadmin.hackthebox, IDRSA. Um, we can see there are bad permissions, it's too open. We can see, look, um, all users have uh, read access, which is not accepted um, by the SSH client. So we can trimod this to 600 just to fix that. And now we won't get this prompt again. It will just ask for the the uh, the passphrase, which is blood blood ninjas. 
and we see we're able to log in as Joanna that we're, we're able to get the user.txt file there so just cat user.txt there we go um, what we can do like I would usually do we want to get to root so I'm going to just do the usual checks sudo tackl and we can see we do have a capability uh, to run a binary as sudo we can run nano um, and specifically to open this optpriv so let's let's just go to gtfo bins like I instructed earlier and we'll see is there a sudo um, a sudo privilege escalation technique and there is so you just do like control r control x and then we'll run this command here so we'll give this a go uh, sudo bin nano uh, opt priv there we go so we can do control r for read file and then we can see there is a control x which is execute commands we'll do that there we'll go reset um, and then it's sh1 into and 0 and 2 into and 0 as well we do this and it looks like we see there is a hashtag there if we press enter well we're able to escape that we run id we are running as the root user you can cd to root um, you can see there's the root.txt we can cat this out there we go nice so we've privilege escalated to root um, and we've completed the challenge we've got all the flags like i said this was a bit of a long one um, but i hope you've enjoyed um, and yeah i'll see you on the next one thank you cheers